Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. Welcome to the chapter on connecting SharePoint framework components together using something called dynamic data. Now, for those of you who have been seasoned SharePoint developers, you may be familiar with the concept of connected web parts. And that would allow us to have one web part provide data to one or more other web parts on the page through this connection vehicle that we had. We've had it in server-side model for a while now and like farm solutions and sandbox solutions. And we also had it a similar concept that we could do with SharePoint add-ins. So what dynamic data does is it brings the same capability to the SharePoint framework. But I'd like to think about it more as like connected web parts plus plus. It's a lot more powerful than what we used to be able to do in the past. And the reason for that is that the way it works is that anything that's a SharePoint framework component can provide data to anything else that's a SharePoint framework component. It's really powerful. So what it's going to give us the ability to do is to have a web part on the page, provide data to any other consumer on the page that wants to get data from that provider. There's some nice stuff that we have built in with web parts that allows us to connect one, the consumer to the provider web part to fetch data. But then you think about, well, how do I do this with SharePoint Framework Extensions, another kind of a component that's out there. And the way we're gonna do that is using the API to consume data in an extension from a provider that's on the page. If it was a, if it's a provider extension, that's really easy to set up because there's no UI that's necessary. But we're going to need to use the API to find a web part or a data source, a provider on the page and consume that data inside of our extension. So you're going to see how to do this both through the UI using web parts and through the API using SharePoint framework extensions. So what exactly are we going to dive into within this chapter? So we're first going to start out with introducing what dynamic data is. So you want to understand what it is from a high level concept so that you have a full grasp on what this technology is and what the intent of it is and what it's supposed to do. Then we're going to dive into how we can build dynamic data. So we're not going to dive into any of the demos just yet, but I want to focus on some of the APIs. What things are required for a provider? What things do we need to do? What kind of APIs do we need to set up? How do you register a data source? How do you advertise the properties that are connectable? And then we're going to look at it from a consumer point of view as well. And there's two types of consumers. There's one that we can use the like a web part. We can use the property pane and provide a nice API way of getting data. And then the other way that we do it is through a using the API to get the data. And we can do that with an extension. So we're going to see how to do that in both of those ways. And then we're going to dive in to doing a handful of demos. So we've got one demo where we're going to create a provider web part that's going to provide Apollo missions. Then we're going to have a consumer web part that consumes a single property that's a string from the provider. So we're going to show an image from the Apollo mission. We're then going to have a, another web part that we're going to build, but that's going to connect to an entire object. So we're going to provide the entire mission object to the, another web part. And that looks a little bit different. There's some nuances there with how data gets serialized. We'll talk about that. And then the last thing that we're going to do is build a SharePoint framework extension. And that extension is going to look for a provider on the page that has specific properties. And if it finds those properties that it's looking for, then it will display that data on the page. So it's going to kind of automatically connect itself. There will be nothing that you have to do to connect it. But we'll also add a little property to the provider web part and say, can extensions connect to this, like automatically connect to this and get data, kind of like lighting it up. So we have an ability to, to do that as well. So we got a lot of stuff that we're going to cover here, understanding it and then a boatload of demos. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So let's dive into dynamic data first.